You're most definitely welcome to this service today uh, from St. Mary's, Sister Nola, wherever you find yourself, whether you're joining us on the telephone, uh, joining us live, or joining us later on YouTube. A couple of things coming up. There's an art competition for the children and young people. Time to get creative. A time to get creative and give thanks. You'll see there, hopefully on the screen, um, the note about it is based on the parable of the sower, thanks to Kirsty and um, to um, Peter for putting this together. Um, the details are there, but they're also on our website and they're on our Facebook page, so don't worry if you don't catch all the details. But um, it'd be really great if you could take part. I'd love to see some amazing pieces of creation. Um, so different age groups, there's a good prize as well. Uh, and then they need to be emailed in or photographed in or posted in to Kirsty. And as I said, the details on our website and on our Facebook page. Also for the young people at this time, thanks to um, the Methodist Church in Donegal, they're running a Youth Alpha. Some of you youth, this is for secondary school age, some of you youth have done this before uh, as part of confirmation, some of you haven't. But it's a really good um, uh, time together. It's a time to ask and answer those, some of those questions you may well have about who God is, why you read the Bible, what about this Jesus, all that kind of stuff. Uh, John is really good and the team around him. So if you'd like to be part of that, that's going to be happening tonight. Uh, you'll need to join in via Zoom because of course we can't meet in different places. Uh, so I will have the Zoom link uh, and again the uh, details are on our um, website for that one. Uh, and you'll find it through the notice sheet as well on the website. So it'd be really good if a good few of you could join in on that. And um, you'll also be part of it with other people of your own age as well. So that's some for the younger end of the spectrum. But all together we come now before God to come to him in worship. Gracious Father, bring your blessing into this meeting of your people, gathered here today in many places. Speak to our hearts through the hymns, the prayers that are said, and the reading and the understanding of your word. We come before God, we turn back to him, to his ways, to the truth, and him in our lives. Close your eyes to my sins and wipe out all my evil. Create a pure heart in me, O God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. So we return to the Lord God, and we say to him this together. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to a time of worship and hymn and song, a well-known hymn to begin, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Oh, 
prayer for this Sunday. Almighty God, you've made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service, that we may have your peace, and in the world to come may see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Exodus. Thank you, Elsie. A reading taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We now come to our psalm. It's slightly different from the lection reading today, but I felt it was most appropriate.
New Testament reading today is taken from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, chapter 3, beginning at verse 4. Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to the zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness under the law, blameless. Whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I've already obtained this, I've already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Amen. I pray, Lord, as we come to your word, your word may, open, may come to open ears, open hearts, open minds, open lives, and that you would speak to us you challenge us, call us, and draw us closer to yourself, to your will and to your ways, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Reflecting on the readings, and again, I've chosen to use the readings in the Paul's letter to the church, to the people of God. Paul is essentially asking, what have I put, what we put our faith, our trust in? Well, what have we put our trust in? Paul reminds us of his journey before this. He says that if there is anyone in the church to have confidence in what has gone before, he should. He is circumcised as required of the Jewish male. He's of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew, born of Hebrews. Remember, that's highly important. He's observed the law of the Pharisees. He's been zealous in it, so zealous for all Jewish traditions that he persecuted the church for not keeping the traditions as they were. And he has uh, followed the law letter by letter, absolutely. And yet Paul has said that he counts this nothing. But let us look, because this was an immense challenge for Paul, as it is for us. Can we move on to camera? We're on camera three. Thank you. Many of us are not... Jewish. I myself am not Jewish. Paul would have kept the law. He would have respected God in all ways. Thank you to Elsie for reading from the Exodus passage. The Jews have, I think, 314 rules if you're Orthodox. I may have got that number wrong. But they have various names for it, but they call it the Halakha. Again, my Hebrew is a bit rusty. But that means the way. They would have followed the ways of the laws. And the laws aren't wrong or they aren't bad. I mean, the, the Ten Commandments are the basis by which Jesus is teaching. Remember all the law and the prophets? Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. But first, love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. They're based on the commandments. Jesus doesn't say they were wrong or bad. We have here a Jewish Bible. I don't have the rabbinical laws, and I have a Bible here in Hebrew. And Paul would have known the Bible and would have read it well. There it is in Genesis. But I suspect many here would struggle to read it. I might only get a few words. But Paul realized that if his faith was only in the law, 
the law could only take him so far it could point to Jesus, but it wasn't Jesus himself. And you may say to me today, well, you know, I'm not Jewish, so I needn't worry about following those particular commandments. But there are other things in human nature, whether it's inside the church or outside the church. We love to make structures, traditions, patterns, rules even to follow. And yet, they're not necessarily based on wrong things. They're not, without bad, they're not with bad intent. But they often become an end in themselves when we put our faith and trust in them. Those of you who are familiar to coming to the church in normal times will be quite familiar. You'll come to our church and you'll receive a prayer book. And you'll see, receive a hymn book and a notice sheet. I've often felt that if you came to an Anglican church, you receive half a library when you arrive in the door. And we're using the prayer book today. They're the basis of our prayers. And they're well written and they're based on the Bible. But if our faith and our practice stops just at the prayer book, then we're missing the one to which it points to. I have here a commentary of the Bible. I also have a concordance, a dictionary, an explanation of the words in the Bible. I mean, these are just two of the books I have. And sometimes we can get so concerned about this letter or that word. Don't get me wrong, the Bible is the foundation, the manual for our lives. But it doesn't point to itself. In fact, it's probably the best example we have here. I'm thinking going forward, and it would be interesting if you could let me know in the comments if you'd appreciate this. I'm thinking of doing a series in the Bible with videos and a bit of talk. But they, the Bible doesn't point to itself. It points to who God is, the God from the very beginning, creation, all the way to the revelation, the end of time, is looking over, caring, and calling his people. He doesn't just step in and take over. He asks us to respond to him. And in the middle, of course, is Jesus, who shows us what it means to be human and how to follow God. But there are other things we put our faith and trust in. What about science? This is one of my old textbooks. Microbial genetics. Anybody fancy reading that for bedtime reading? Very appropriate in these times. Because we're looking to science to give us a vaccine. We're looking to science to give treatments. And they're needed and they're necessary. But then do we put our lives entirely on hold until that happens? I don't think that would be possible, practical, or good for us. We need the science, it's useful and helpful. But if we put our faith solely in science, where is our hope? Where is our strength? Where is our confidence? We have technology. Useful and all as it is, if we didn't have technology, I wouldn't be able to speak to you now. But if I became so obsessed with the technology, I'd have my face in a tablet, I wouldn't be looking at you, and I wouldn't be sharing with you God's word. Then we have ourselves in society, we have the mask. Sometimes we put our faith and trust in ourselves alone. Yet in those quiet dark nights, I wonder how confident we are in ourselves. I wonder how well we stand up even to our own measurements let alone measurements of others doesn't make us bad doesn't make science bad certainly doesn't make the bible bad but they all should be elements and point to god this is what paul has said he regards the former things as worthless i mean he would have followed the rules to the letter the letter of the law but he realizes that they're only a pale imitation a pale foretaste, like a dim vision of the reality. He regards them as rubbish. He puts them aside because he wants to gain Christ. He hasn't forgotten them. They're not that they weren't part of his history, not that he doesn't learn. I mean, if you look at the teaching of Paul, it comes from the Bible, it comes from his understanding. But the foundation for him, the keystone, is Jesus. If you were to look at one of the arches now and you were to look at the stones, There'd be a stone at the top of the arch that if you took that down, the arch would fall down. Same is true if we don't put our trust in Jesus. And eventually it will fall away. But only with Jesus can we have trust. Jesus said of himself in a passage we often use at funerals, but why wait till such a time of loss as then? 
In John 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says to his disciples, those are the people who listen and pay attention to what he's saying. Don't be worried. Have faith in God. Have faith in him. He speaks about many rooms. He speaks about through him you can know the Father. Philip is still not convinced. He says, how can we know the Father? And Jesus says, you can know the Father through me, through trust in me. Thank you, John. He's moved them on for me. Thank you very much. It's great to have helpful assistance. It makes such a difference. I only have one pair of hands. Thank you very much. But Jesus says, have faith in him, faith in his words, faith in what he does. Look at the compassion and challenge of Jesus to the lady at the well. The feeding of the 5,000, the feeding of the 4,000. The man who couldn't get to the pool of Siloam. The man who was lowered down to the roof, which is probably actually Jesus' house. The guy who had the demons, who was throwing pigs. What about the calming of the storm? What about walking on the water to Peter and lifting him up and helping him? So many examples of Jesus being a both perfect human and showing the true nature of God. So my hope is that we would take heart from the words of Paul, that we would be encouraged from the words of Paul. I'll see what comes next. Yes. That we would get to know Jesus more clearly, nearly, and dearly, as the Bible says. That we would get to know him through his word. Through the word of the prayer book. I mean, that's why we're worshipping this morning. Through the words of the Bible. But they point not to itself, but to him. These days we'll need to use technology. We used a bit of science. I'm a scientist by training. But may our lives reflect him and not just ourselves. But I want to conclude with another um, reading we had it a moment ago in a song, because I believe it very much echoes what Paul is challenging the people in Philippi and the people in Stranorla, Kiltivo, Green Glass, and wherever you find yourself today. It's in the Finn Valley, Derbyshire, I think Lancashire, wherever you may find yourself. He says he presses forward to what lies ahead, the goal of the heavenly price, the call of God of Christ Jesus, to make it his own, to obtain that what he hasn't already fully got. There's another reading we often use at funerals. Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd. And I chose the one because it echoes what I believe we nearly need to do. The shepherd is the shepherd who is with us in good times, and perhaps we know or recognize him more easily then, and through the dark times, the dark paths. But that whether it's good or bad, that we wouldn't wait to the most challenging, and we wouldn't forget in the best of times, to trust in him. Here is a picture um, from Arts Minsula, from yesterday at best. And I miss the sea living inland, not very far inland, but living inland. And looking out at the sea reminds me of the power and breadth and size of God. It was a lovely day. In the far distance, you can see the green pastures. In the middle distance, you can still the quiet waters. And standing on the shoreline, it helped me to be reminded that Jesus is my shepherd. He is the one to whom I need to lean on him for strength his rod to bring me back to himself. In good times and dark times, may we know him more clearly, nearly and dearly. So I leave you with this picture and the words and song from the Lord's my shepherd. <laughs>
So as we return to God, let us turn to him, turn to his ways, his truth and life with him. We with our own mouths and in our hearts, let us affirm our faith in Jesus. We recall that in the letters that were based on last week's sermon, um, reading from Philippines, of what Jesus did for us and calls us to follow. Together we say, though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, every voice proclaim, that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we turn now to time of prayer, and Elsie will lead us in prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, as we come to you in prayer, we hand over to you the burdens of care and worry we are carrying and center our hearts and minds on you to pray for the needs of the Church, for the needs of mankind, and for our own needs. Lord of the Church, we pray that all will come to believe in you. Forgive and heal the divisions that can separate the members of your Church, so the people within the body of Christ will be united. Lord, help all who minister and serve you to build on that unity, to reach out to those outside the Church as well as within so that they may be a blessing and encourage others to join with them in their journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for calling Bishop Andrew, Reverend Adam, and all the clergy to lead your church in this diocese. Help us to realize the importance that we pray for our clergy as they carry out their ministry. Forgive us, Lord, when we might think, because of the position they hold, that clergy may not need our prayers. Help us to realize that in the present situation of COVID-19, and with the added challenges that brings, they have their own trials and tribulations, and now, more than ever, need the prayers of us, the people. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, open our minds to develop greater understanding and stir our hearts to a deeper commitment to pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Father God, when we believe that righteous living is all that is needed to secure your salvation. Help us to understand that the Apostle Paul counted himself as a righteous person when zealously carrying out the law as a Pharisee but counted all that as loss when he came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Help us to surrender our worldly attitudes and values so that we, like Paul, can live our lives centered in knowing the real Jesus Christ. We pray that we may seek to know him more intimately with each passing day by reading scripture to better understand that Jesus is the way the truth and the life, and that we will deepen and expand our relationship with you, him and with you, God our Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we give you thanks and praise for this beautiful planet you have created for us to live in. Forgive us for the times when we take the Earth's resources for granted and waste it what you have given us. We pray for those who are physically hungry. We think of the people of Yemen and of many other countries around the world who are facing critical food shortages. May we, who are abundantly blessed, be people of hosp hospitality, reflecting the generous open-heartedness of your kingdom. We pray for peace and life in its fullness for those enslaved by terror, war, violence and oppression. We pray for those crying out for freedom and justice 
for their children and for themselves. We pray for the leaders of the world. Guide them with the light of your truth that stirred by the Holy Spirit, they may be filled with concern and love and that in all that they do, they will seek justice and truth. Father, we lift up the leaders of our own countries and those in place of authority who politically rule our nation. We pray that they would govern our land with wisdom and integrity. Make them mindful of their responsibility to value the welfare of people in these days as they work towards protecting public health, the economy, and people's livelihoods. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for the communities you have placed us in. Lord, you have commanded us to love you and to love our neighbors as ourselves. May this love begin in our homes, bringing healing where there is brokenness, understanding where there is frustration, joy where there is sadness, and hope where there is despair. Help us to witness your love through the way we relate to all those we encounter on the daily course of our life's journey. We pray for the older generation and those living alone in our community. We bring before you in particular those who are lonely and isolated due to the restrictions caused by the pandemic. We bring to you our children, many of whom are becoming emotionally and emotional and anxious about the virus since returning to school, and for our young people as they come to terms with the consequences that COVID-19 is having on their lives. Help them, Lord, to know the joy and peace of your presence, and keep us mindful of how much we need to support and care for each other in every age group. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, we thank you for the miracle of healing and for those we know who are now on the road to recovery. Comfort with your presence those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and give them courage and hope in their troubles. We pray for those whose lives are ruined by any kind of distress or anxiety, that they may know your comfort, hope, and that sense of your healing love, and find comfort through the support of family and friends and through the help of healthcare professionals. We pray for those suffering from coronavirus, those living in the fear of contracting it, for our health service and our hospitals anxious about the capacity to care for patients with the growing number of cases who need treatment. We pray for scientists as they continue to work strenuously towards the production of a safe vaccine, and for all who are involved in research and the manufacturing of drugs to combat the virus. Lord, we pray with hope and confidence that there will soon be an end to the sickness and distress of the COVID-19 pandemic. And in our prayers this week, let us remember those known to us in our parish or wider community who are unwell, and we continue to pray for Ryan McGuire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of eternity, we thank you for those in our families and for those known to us who have died in the faith of Christ. Thank you for the role their godly influence had on so many lives of people that they came into contact with during their earthly lives. Father God, your word tells us that you are close to those who are brokenhearted and grieving, and that you will rescue all who are crushed in spirit. Lord, we pray that you will come near to those who are facing times of sadness and loss. And we pray especially today for the Patton family in Kerlecki during this time of sadness and loss. Draw them and all who mourn ever closer into your everlasting arms of love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, as we move into the coming week, may we long to know Christ more and to know the power of his risen life working in us and through us. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts afresh on Jesus, renew our spirits, 
and fill us with your joy and peace. Amen. We now come to the family prayer, the prayer of those who are the family of Jesus, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 Our final hymn song today is a prayer of blessing. May the peace of God, our Heavenly Father, and the grace of the risen Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, keep our hearts and minds with his love. Keep us, Father, in the community of faith, the church of your Son, Jesus Christ, and help us to confess him as Messiah and Lord in all we say and do. We ask this in his name. Amen. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen. I leave you with um, the reminder of the competition coming up.